Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lawback and this is going to be a video on the reasons for the establishment and the difference between the British colonies in North America as they developed in the late 1600s and throughout most of the 1700s. We should definitely keep in mind that England was relatively late to colonization compared to Spain, France, and the Netherlands. As a general rule, the Dutch and the French had better interactions in North America with Native Americans than did the English. While there were some positive interactions between English colonists and Native Americans, basically the English wanted the Native Americans off the land and pushed them westward. And of course, this resulted in several conflicts between colonists and Native Americans. We are going to go over the basics of New England colonies, the Middle colonies, the Chesapeake colonies, and the Southern colonies. Let's start with New England colonies. New England was settled by disgruntled Puritans from Europe who did not like the Church of England. They thought it was too Catholic-y. The Pilgrim Separatists, who were extreme Puritans, used the Mayflower to land in Plymouth Bay in 1620. So the Massachusetts Bay Colony was chartered in 1629 and settled by about 11,000 Puritans under the guidance of Governor John Winthrop. Winthrop famously declared in a sermon, that, quote, we shall be a city upon a hill, end quote, in which the Puritans of the Massachusetts Bay Colony would build a model religious community based on Puritan beliefs and values. These Puritan beliefs were based on the idea that people were predestined for heaven or hell. This belief is commonly known as predestination. These Puritans came to America in very large families and for the most part enjoyed a lengthy lifespan, despite the cold winter temperatures. The Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay colonies were later merged together and became what is now known as Massachusetts. This occurred in 1691. Other colonies within New England were Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire. Rhode Island was settled by Roger Williams, who was banned from the Massachusetts Bay colony because of his religious views. Williams' emphasis on religious diversity and toleration would be trademarked for Rhode Island. Likewise, Anne Hutchinson questioned Puritan authorities. She believed in the idea that faith alone, not deeds, was necessary for salvation. She and her followers were banished from Massachusetts Bay Colony and founded the Colony of Portsmouth, which would later be incorporated into Rhode Island. Yet another group would break off from the Puritans and found the Colony of Connecticut. They drew upon the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, which became the first written constitution in American history. Politically, New England valued town meetings but only male churchgoers had the ability to vote. The New England economy was based on shipbuilding, fishing, whaling, lumber, iron making, and farming. Now, farming was not as prominent in New England as it was in the Middle and Southern colonies. Now, on to the Middle colonies. The Middle colonies were made up of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and they all had good farmland and produced grains for bread, built ships, produced lumber, and trapped furs. Philadelphia and New York City were the two major port cities in the Middle Colonies. The Middle Colonies were also pretty ethnically diverse compared to the New England Colonies. New York was initially settled by the Dutch in 1623. Earlier, English explorer Henry Hudson sailed up the Hudson River and claimed New Amsterdam, which later would become known as New York City, for the Dutch. Ironically, in 1664, England took New York City from the Dutch in a nonviolent episode. Pennsylvania was founded by William Penn, a Quaker, in 1681, and he tried to establish what he called the Holy Experiment. The Quakers were a peaceful religious group of dissenters from England. They believed in taking no oaths, refused military service, and were accepting of Indians relative to the other British colonists. Consequently, Pennsylvania became a liberal colony that was also ethnically diverse and accepting of most religions. Now on to the Chesapeake colonies. The Chesapeake colonies were Maryland and Virginia. Jamestown, Virginia was the first English settlement in the colonies in 1607. The initial Jamestown settlers and many other Chesapeake residents would die at an early age from disease. Life expectancy was much shorter here than in the clean air of New England. Virginia and Maryland would be first and third in population by 1700 of the 13 colonies. Tobacco was king in both Maryland and Virginia. Virginian John Rolfe was the master of, of cultivating tobacco. Tobacco was introduced to Europeans by Native Americans, and Europeans quickly became addicted. 
Maryland was founded by Lord Baltimore in 1634. His motives for settling Maryland were money and finding a peaceful haven for Catholics who were being persecuted in England. Tensions between Catholics and Protestants in his tobacco colony caused the passage of the Act of Toleration in 1649, which promised toleration to all Christians, but no other religions. Finally, let's take a look at the Southern colonies. South and North Carolina were merged together as one colony until 1712, when they separated and became individual colonies. South Carolina would soon become heavily populated by black slaves, and that would become the majority of their population. England wanted this colony to provide food to its wealthy sugar islands in the West Indies and Caribbean. Labor-intensive rice became the main export of South Carolina. Charleston became a major seaport city and was relatively diverse for a southern city during this time. It looked a lot like a northern city. North Carolina was settled by a number of migrants from aristocratic Virginia. Many of these earlier settlers did not like those in charge in Virginia and their Church of England. As a result, North Carolina became full of religious and political dissenters from Virginian authority and developed a sense of rugged individualism and democracy while being mostly small-time farmers, many of whom were tobacco farmers. Georgia would be the last colony of the original 13 colonies, gaining its own charter in 1732. England wanted it to serve as a defensive buffer against Spanish Florida and French Louisiana. Philanthropists, such as leader James Oglethorpe, who would become their first governor, helped those in debt and made progress reforming debtors' prisons. Georgia was a colony that those down on their luck or in debt in England could retreat to. In general, the southern colonies were lands of big plantations and small farms. So that's a little summary of the British 13 North American colonies. Some big takeaways. We should keep in mind that there were a lot of regional differences in culture, religious toleration, and economics between the different colonies. And as time went on in the 18th century, all the colonies were becoming drastically different than England itself, and the 13 colonies were gaining their own identity. And as generations went by, the colonists viewed themselves as being more distant from England. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of the day.